All right, hey guys, here we are. Hole number four here. Now, one of the things that I mentioned last time is I try to make sure that I get this up to here. I can tell that I'm probably not going to be able to this time with the tailwind. So I got to think how much power do I want to go? Because now what I'm going to have to be thinking is I got to get this to Bigfoot range. So I'm just trying to get it to Bigfoot range. I'm going to use maybe about half power, my full, full top spin. And I just want to set myself up for Bigfoot because I know I ain't getting the Spectra this time. But I'd rather it be towards the top of Bigfoot than towards the bottom. So what I'm trying to do is, instead of get this up as far as possible, I want it to be near the top of the club so it has a little bit more spin as opposed to the bottom of the club. So very intentional. And you can see it's still towards the... Whew, I might have been able to jut it. Well, not with the tailwind, but... Or not with the headwind here. But here, I want my adjustment. So I, I was maybe still like five rings long, you know, because I would have liked to have set up, you know, right here and then been able to count my five rings up. And you can see there's still about five rings to play with. So I still drove it about five yards long. And like I said, I don't know if I could have got up there for the perfect spectra. And I didn't want to chance it because I knew any headwind which I basically got, I wouldn't have been able to, because I would have needed to adjust up here. And without being able to adjust the target up here without overpower, it's going to bring me up to Bigfoot. So we're going to need to uh, switch our um, short iron out. This is going to extend the range for the Bigfoot. And we'll take a look at this adjustment. Now, one of the things that I'm going to use is a lower than usual Bigfoot range. And I know I'm very close to the midline here with my adjustment. So knowing that I'm at the midline right here on my initial setup, that's very close. But I'm going to be pulling up from this. So I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood. One thing that I do like to do is I like to just kick just a little bit of the side spin up to kind of counter this wind. Now I am coming up from the max line. So knowing that I'm coming up from the max line, I'll probably want to use an adjustment that's different from my min instead of true min. So if true min that I like to use is maybe one, four, five, I'm thinking more in the one, four range maybe even 138 somewhere in here because I'm going to need just a little bit more adjustment so 64 that's because we're moving up you can see we're going past the hole now so we're going to use an adjustment value that reflects that so and this is right in the 6465 range so let's go ahead give this a go See what it looks like. It's coming in very nice. Less than, less than a cup off, and it did just check up. I thought it was going to roll out just a little bit heavier. You know, typically what I'll try to do is put the ball guide really tight on the hole on a tailwind, but these London holes come in kind of like bricks, and I know that it comes in a little bit hotter, so I usually back off a little bit, and that time it costs me. Because I might have got the I might have got the drop on the left edge, but just a little bit more power there. Now, one of the things that I like to do here, you know, if it wouldn't have been straight headwind, we probably would have used the long iron. So, to, one of two options that I like to do on on this hole is I like to use lightning rod. I like to use stingray. So I'm giving up five yards here. I have to make sure that I can keep my ring adjustment. Let's just see what this looks like. You can see nine four is my wind. There's my max range. We're going to be setting up here, pulling towards max. So we're going to use our max ring adjustment. I can tell you that. And I'll also play the break. So you'll see that I try to straighten this guide out like this. And you can see it's right around two spin that causes that to happen. So we're going to make sure that we put that side spin on. And this may be pretty good. And maybe a little bit heavy. 
I'm going to take off some of this. One of the things that you'll see is I try to keep the ball guide going through the hole. You can see that it is going through the hole. It's because I know it's going to collapse down. And it's all about mastering how much is it going to collapse down. So this is more in the range of what I want. Something like this for a 9.4. And this is, this is, again, one of the keys to the guys using, you know, 60, 70 win percent balls. They can get that wind down to 3.4. They don't have to worry so much about effect. I need to play a significant amount of effect there. So one of the things that I like here is maybe somewhere around here, one one six three, for my value, for my max. I know I'm going to be close to max. And at nine four, that's fifteen three rings. And again, like I mentioned, you know, not having to play this much effect and guessing this much is a significant advantage. So that is one of the things. Once you start to get good with these adjustments. You know, if you can get in the range with, with, with these power balls, that's when the other power balls really start to give you an advantage. So there's 5-3. I like to do that ring adjustment first. Here's fifth, and we can't make it. Ugh. Unbelievable poor luck. So what I do, switch, switch the balls, and that fixes our problem. Now, I didn't know if I was going to make it to the max line. Now that I did, I'm a little worried about my spin. Because it, it might check up. You know, I'm worried about this maybe coming up short. But let's just see how it plays out. This is the London Holes. They like to roll. So let's just see how it plays out. But again, like I mentioned, even though I had the ball guide through the hole, I know there's going to be so much compression that happens here. So does it get there? And it does. So there you can see we were able to drop it. And again, you know, it doesn't matter if the wind's high or not. It's just all about learning the game better. Um, you know, we don't have to use the best wind balls to get these drops. And you can see right now, and this somebody, there's somebody right next to me who has the same score, but since I got the ace, it gives me tiebreaker on them. <clears throat> And we're using all white balls for these videos. But just know that, you know, those other balls give you that much more of an advantage. And I do like this hole. I do like this pin placement. We're going to try to get aggressive without going into that, this rough here. So I got to think, okay, here's five rings down. Looks like that's about where I want it to land, more or less. I'm going to come back five rings, which is like a half ring adjustment. And maybe just shift over to the side a little bit. Let's just see what this, this plays like. Again, we are trying to get aggressive on purpose, kind of aggressive intentionally. We want this to be up here near the edge. Because it was really going to open up our options. And that's exactly what we did. And that was with five rings pulled back. And the reason we wanted to get up here is to put ourselves in a very nice range. So now you'll see here's min, here's max. We can get aggressive again. So that's what you call a perfect tee shot. So that's why we wanted to take advantage of that. Because now we get a chance to make two in a row. You know, realistically, you know, three in a row. All of these are makeable. Okay, it just really takes, you know, there, there's some wind luck involved. If, look, looking back at my first hole, you know, any headwind, we can get aggressive. We just got, you know, it's the one pin where you can't get aggressive. You know, and, and this pin, even with the tailwind, you know, we can still get aggressive. Here you can see up near the max line, one of the things I like to do, I like to play the slope. I don't like to always use full backspin here into a headwind because I want to make sure that the ball still is rolling up. So that's one of the things that you'll see. I don't want the ball to stop, you know, on the front edge. I like to come in off these backspin numbers. And that's what you can see that I'm doing. So next, it'll just be about alignment. 
this ball guide is going to want to collapse down. Now, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the max line here, but I know it'll be close. Here you can see that looks pretty good to me, to where it's going to land very close to the cup. Just kind of scoot forward just a touch. You got to keep in mind it is going to collapse down that ball guide. It's not going to. So you got to make sure that you get it to the hole. You know you don't want to stop it on the front ledge. And again, eight seven here. We're going to go eight seven. I'm thinking. I don't know if I'm going to make it to the max line. I might. So I'm going to be. I'm going to be up here around seven. So seven seven one seven. And let's just see what this looks like. Just go with this. Feels pretty good. <clears throat> and sure enough, there it is, double eagle. So again, we did this with Mojave's. We're using white balls and still doing well in the tournament. This is, you know, one of those important concepts that you just want to see that, you know, we don't need to have the high wind balls, but I can tell you, we're going to be deadly on all six of these. All six, of, it, it basically, what, what ends up happening is when you put yourself in these white ball situations, I just want to, you know, talk about this real quick. We might have, um, you know, really bad winds that might take us out of a shot range for instance you know and a perfect example was my first hole so when you look at my first hole with a white ball too much of a tailwind i can't stop the ball i know it's going to come in too hot there's nothing i can do about it i tried to manipulate it the best i could there's nothing i could do about it let's say i reduce that wind to a three five four three five or four with like a 60 70 percent ball then we can still get aggressive. So it's still a shot and we're moving less rings. You gotta, you gotta consider the more rings that I move, the more air I introduce. So you typically don't want to introduce more air. So that's the principle that a lot of these guys are taking advantage of is they're, they're able to, to play without the balls that are, uh, you know, introducing this air. You know, they're going 60, 70% on every shot. And that's when you can really get precise, you know, even more than I'm getting on this. I can take my game to that much higher of a level because I don't have to worry about all the wind effect and all that secondary stuff. It's much less. It's much, it's much more manageable. So keep all that in mind. Good luck, and I'll see you guys on this last set coming up.